So you have a new baby or maybe you're expecting one and you keep hearing about sleep training. What is it? Is it gonna harm your baby? What do I even do? Don't worry, I got you covered in this video. Hey guys, I'm Becca Campbell of Little Z Sleep, your pediatric sleep consultant. My mission in this YouTube channel is to solve your child's sleep because we cannot afford to be tired, exhausted parents. Our kids wanna sleep, so let's live happy, healthy lives and get some rest. Today I'm talking about sleep training methods. You probably have heard people throw out, cry it out, no cry, Ferber, what the heck are all these different methods? So I have you fully covered. I'm going to explain all the methods of sleep training. You see, I'm flooded every day with people asking me if I'm going to make their child cry it out, or they want to know how much crying is involved in sleep training, and you are a passionate, loving parent, so I understand your concern. But let's go through every method out there where I fall in, what my sleep philosophy is, and what I believe is the most fair to your baby. Let's Let's get started. So in order of like most extreme to the least extreme, you think of everything I'm talking about like on a linear line here, okay? You have the cry it out extinction method and then you've got the no cry sleep solution. So you have a vast expanse between these two and we wanna talk about what each of these means and there's not just two camps, you guys. It's not like there's cry it out and no cry and then everybody else is like screwed, right? No, we have to be able to find a plan that fits your family and understand where you might fall in place with these. So let's start over here with the extinction method, the cry it out. So when people say cry it out, most of the time they're misinformed. They're saying, oh, my baby had to cry it out, but their baby cried for like two to five minutes. That's not crying it out. The real cry it out method, also the extinction method, is just as it sounds. You put your baby down into the crib or the bed, you walk out the room, you close the door, and they extinct themselves to sleep. They cry it out all night long. You have zero interaction with your baby. You let them be. Unfortunately, I've heard of pediatricians recommend the cry it out method starting from eight weeks old. This breaks my heart because at eight weeks old, your baby is still learning and grasping the difference between day or night. It's not developmentally appropriate. Now, is cry it out ever appropriate? Sure, some families like this method. They like to be able to say this is a one and done because it's fast. When you do it correctly, it's a very quick method that just takes a few nights and things are good. The next step from cry it out, it's actually what most people think is cry it out, but it's not. The Ferber method is kind of the next step after cry it out. Ferber method asks you to do checks with your baby. So you put them down into the crib and then you do checks, but you increase the checks each time. So the Ferber method talks heavily about getting your baby drowsy, putting them into the crib, then leaving the room, and then maybe come back in two to five minutes, and then come back in seven minutes, in 10 minutes, in 15 minutes. So it incrementally gives you more time between your checks. I don't love this because it's inconsistent. If you have followed me long enough, you know I love consistency. So incrementally changing how long you're waiting to go check on your baby makes no sense to me at all. So next, what I like to say is the little Z's method. So yes, your baby's gonna cry. Yes, you're gonna do some checks, but I'm also between Ferber and the chair method. We can't apply one of these strategies to all the ages. It really is age appropriate. So. Ferber method really starts from about four months of age and you can carry that on. The next one is the chair method and I'll explain how I fit in between here in just a second. But the chair method or camp out method is just as it sounds. You would put a chair right next to your baby's crib, right next to your child's bed and help them fall asleep. Right after the chair method, you're going to have things like a waking sleeping strategy. This one to me sounds more elusive, right? It's not exactly that consistent game plan that my clients love. The wake and sleep strategy actually asks you to nurse your baby to sleep, to rock them to sleep. They want you to vary up how you put your baby to sleep. And then this is the kind of confusing part to me. You're supposed to nurse your baby, rock your baby to sleep, and then you lay them down in the crib and then you wake them up a little bit. What does that even mean? Wake them up a little bit, like poke them, tickle them. Like literally the method is you arouse them a little bit so that they can cry for a little bit and put themselves back to sleep. Then after this kind of like wake sleep method, you've got the no cry sleep solutions. To be perfectly fair, 
I have a no idea how a no cry sleep solution works. Families have used them, but the difference between them, remember we've gone on this huge line from no cry all the way to, no cry all the way to cry it out. The difference here is how quickly these methods work. So a cry it out extinction method, it's fast. It's like one to two nights, you're good. All the way on the no cry solution, that takes months. So it kind of comes down to when you're deciding which sleep method is right for you, you might wanna decide how much effort, how much patience, how much do I have to commit to this plan and this method? Now, an entire other concept to this is crying and the stress levels and the cortisol levels. I don't buy into any of that, but what I want you to have in your pocket at all times is the confidence to implement a consistent plan. So where do I fit in? Well, I kind of already spoiled or gave it to you. I'm right over here between the Ferber and the chair method. Yeah, I use the camp out method, but I don't use the camp out method for certain ages. Yes, I do the Ferber method, but I can't do the Ferber method for a preschool child. And I also already gave you the little hint that I think it's weird and inconsistent to just randomly increase your intervals each time. So my plans to my clients offer age appropriate strategies that do involve protest. They do involve crying. I firmly believe that your child is totally happy and content with how things are now because they don't know what's on the other side. So yes, when you change habits, when you redo things for your child, they're going to protest. They're not gonna like it. But here's the thing, you cannot spend weeks and months trying to be consistent and holding on to threads of hope. You've gotta see change fast. And when you do, your child actually wants to sleep. I firmly believe it is never too late to teach your child how to sleep well. So obviously you're here because your end goal is that your baby sleeps, your child sleeps, you all get great rest. So by really running through all these different methods, I hope that you feel more clarified in what fits you best. See, here's the thing. If all of these are gonna help your child sleep well, that's the end goal. That's why if you've done no cry sleep solution and it worked and your kid's sleeping 11, 12 hours, Yay, I'm so happy for you. If you've done the extinction method and it works, yay, I'm so happy for you. There are no secrets when it comes to sleep training. I am so passionate when people ask me, what am I gonna ask them to do? You know, they don't want crying, they don't want this. Guys, it's not like we have an endless repertoire of methods to choose from. There are certain things that we can do to teach your child how to sleep. And if you resonate with my style and my sleep philosophy, I would love for you to take the next step and take a quick quiz to figure out which sleep training program that we offer is the right fit for you. Don't forget to subscribe to this channel. Sweet dreams. See you next time.